Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 15 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we talk about VR chat creators, world creators, avatar creators, and many more types of creators here on the platform. I'm your host, Novid Player, and with me today, I have a filmmaker here in VR, Mr. Infamous James. James, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good, doing good. So, yeah, so, you know, with making films, you know, there's a lot to unpack when, you know, making films. So, for the general listening audience at home, you know, kind of give a brief description of, like, what exactly do you do inside the platform and when it comes to filmmaking? Well, first I wanted to help edit videos. So, I searched up, like, on um, how to edit videos for a while. And um, I was playing VR chat before this, actually. And, um... I came across this VR chat film, uh, VR chat the movie or something like that, and I wanted to apply for that. I wanted to help edit for it, but they were only hiring body actors. So you know, I applied, and um, it turns out they already had enough people. So um, I couldn't get into there. But um, this one person named Elam, he actually uh, made an announcement saying he needs body actors for a certain film. So I'm like, why not help out body act for that film? I think it was called uh, The Good, The Bad, The Monkey. And I just helped out body act in that film. And then, and, you know, that film got uploaded next. And then, you know, I kept helping out with his film. So, like, What If Mirrors Were Illegal, uh, Backrooms, the anime. And then, you know, uh, VR Chat the movie started having reshoots. So I also started helping out with that. Um, and then from there, Medicals, I think Medicals, they um, advertised something called the VR Chat Film Association. And um, from there is where I found out about Portal Media. Well, it wasn't called Portal Media back then, but that's where I met Virtual. And um, I started helping out over there as a body actor as first. But then I started going up there and started helping with like film stuff and then started, help started helping with editing. So like uh, some videos would be an like, example of, uh, was it Foxfire at the supermarket, the Christmas holiday special, um, game show, Fever Dream. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, you definitely definitely have a lot under your belt, to say the least, when it comes to working on films. So let, let's talk about your, you know, your origin. So you mentioned that you were, uh, you were denied, you know, working for, um, as a body actor for, what was it, VRChat the movie? Or, I don't even remember. You I think it so was much. called back then, that's what I remember. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so then you, you started working with Metacosm. Um, so what, what ex you know, you said you worked on editing stuff, you know, what... What types of things did you edit? Like, I know you, I know you named a bunch, but like, just for specific, uh, specific sake, like, what, what types of scenes mm -hmm. did you edit? Like, what exactly, you know, in a layman's term, what exactly did you do in the editing process? Okay, so for well, into the meta, it's called into the metaverse. No, I didn't really do any much editing in that area. I just helped with body acting at first because um, they didn't really need editors back then. So I'm like, you know, if they need help, I just want to help in any way I can. So. I didn't help in editing in any of the Metacosm side, but on the Portal Media side, I started editing. The, I think the first video I edited for them was the Fox. What? Uh, it's like some. What was it called? Something at the supermarket. Fox. Wait. Something. Something at the supermarket. I forgot what it was called, but yeah, yeah that's the first uh, video I helped edit for a studio. I gotcha. I gotcha. So you know, out of out of curiosity, because there's so many there's so many different types of programs out there. You know, what is your preferred method for editing? Uh, I use Premiere Pro. I've actually, uh, I've been so addicted to Premiere Pro and I wanted to learn about it. I first watched a four hour crash course on how to learn to uh, use Premiere Pro. I watched it all the way through, no breaks. And then a year later, or maybe a couple years later, I remember there's a nine hour crash course and I watched that. So yeah, Premiere Pro is like the main editor I use. Fair enough, fair enough. So, did you use Premiere Pro before working on VRChat films, or was there something else that kind of sparked the interest in like using, uh, like editing with Premiere? Uh, before, well, since Premiere is really expensive, I wasn't able to use Premiere before, and I, I think the first video editor I ever used was um, what was it called? Uh, EasyVid. I don't know. I I don't know if this like I I don't think it's that popular, but I think this was a how long ago? It's 2024 now, so it'd be around eight, eight years ago-ish, maybe more. Eight years ago when I came across EasyVid, you can record on it, edit edit on it and stuff. It was a, it was a pretty nice program at first, but then I upgraded to Camtasia. And then from there, I went to Sony Vegas. And then from there, I went to Premiere Pro. 
So I just kind of went and found new video editors that you could use. I didn't know about the professional ones until later. I gotcha, I gotcha. You know, and it's definitely interesting because, you know, going from EasyVid to Adobe, you know, it's definitely a step up to say the least, you know. So yeah. out, of, out of curiosity, kind of to delve into that a little more, uh, what was one of the, in your opinion, what was one of the biggest struggles switching from EasyVid to Premiere? Uh, the, the, probably the layout, because on EasyVid, it doesn't have that as much as Premiere Pro. So when I looked at Premiere Pro and I saw all these, like, fancy buttons, like, there's the Select tool, the Text tool, there's, I, I don't remember, the Razor tool. There's so many different tools on Premiere Pro that you can, like, access using that, that EasyVid doesn't have. It's a lot different, but the learning curve was fun for me because I, I started to like editing more and more as I learned more about Premiere. Okay, okay. So, you know, and you, did you strictly use Premiere when it came to VRChat films? Yeah, as, yeah, right, yeah, as of right now, I'm just, I've only been using Premiere Pro for VRChat films. I have been thinking about using DaVinci Resolve for like color grading, but I still need to learn how to color grade a bit more. So, still learning that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll say, yeah, it's not a, it's definitely an interesting uh, thing when it comes to DaVinci Resolve. Um, haha. Um, <laughs> but as, I'm, <laughs> as somebody who uses DaVinci Resolve. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know, kind of going back into the actual VR chat side. Um, let's talk about your origins a little more. So what essentially drove you, you know, to start, you know, playing VR chat to start coming onto the platform? Ah, uh, VR chat. Um, I think it was this one YouTuber, uh, this Korean YouTuber called uh, Great Moon Aroma. Great Moon Aroma, and I saw this one video of um, him like taught like uh, I guess quote unquote trolling other people with his avatar, and um, uh, there was another one where he was teaching curse words to like a to this one to this one girl, and I'm just like, oh, that looks like an interesting game. So I hop on it, and I'm like. This is pretty fun. So then I just started, I started, you know, keep playing the game, and then here I am. Fair enough. Fair enough. So I gotta ask: Did you did you start on desktop, or did you start with a headset? I started on a. I started on desktop. Uh, I was on a desktop using an Eevee avatar. Fair. That's how I started out. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah, with that, you know, what essentially. You know, because I know you said like how you started, but what inspired you to start going to like taking a look at VR chat films in general? Oh, okay. Um, I wonder what the... probably that one trailer from Metacosm Studios, the uh, Into the Metaverse trailer. When I first saw that, I'm like, you can actually make films in VR chat. And then I, me being uh, me wanting to edit films or like you know record films, I looked more deeper into it, joined the Discord, and then that's where you know I'm a you know want to become a body actor. Well, I want to edit, and then you know I applied for to be a body actor, and then yeah, yeah. No, oh, that's uh, it's definitely an interesting thing. So yeah, you know, working with Metacosm, you know, what what was it like first starting out? uh working with metacosm like was it uh was it like a kind of a you know nervous experience like give me give me some details on like or give well, us some details you know kind of how what was the first experience working with metacosm like oh uh, definitely nerve-wracking at first because i'm not a i'm not a social person i may not seem like it but i am very bad with crowds so you know when i first came into a film session there was a whole bunch of people i didn't know so I'm trying to remember what my first session was like, but you know, I was basically the quiet one, just kind of doing as told. And um, I was only in half body back then, so I was just um, just doing as I told. I didn't really talk to much people unless people started talking to me. But then when people do start talking to me, we I talk back and we become friends. And slowly, you know, then starting to get everyone, I started to get to know everyone in the cast, and uh, yeah, it becomes fun. Fair enough. Uh, so yeah, you know, as somebody who's you know, worked with, you know, Portal Media, it, it's definitely an interesting thing when it comes to getting to know your crew, getting to know the cast, you know, it's, it's a, it's a longer process, but a, a worthwhile one at best. Um, so kind of going that into a little bit further, you know, was there anybody in the cast or team specifically that 
you were kind of worried or, you know, you may have been worried about like talking to, was there, was there ever like a, I don't want to call it a, I guess a starstruck moment would be the best way of saying it. Was there ever like, when it came to like Metacosm in particular, um, was there ever that type of moment? Uh, not that I think of. Everyone was really friendly and stuff and I don't really, yeah, I think everything was, everyone's good. I never really had that kind of moment. Fair. And no, that's a good thing. You know, it's, and that's why I believe a lot of people work with, you know, Metacosm and, you know, Portal Media is they don't have that, um, to, for lack of a better word, they don't have that. I'm putting air quotes around this because uh, I don't think, I don't know a better word of it at the moment. Out, I guess. Like, uh, it, it, okay, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's more of a friendly, you know, it's a friendly environment that literally anybody can be a part of. Um, Mm. so that's definitely one of the nicer things about it so i was gonna say with, with that you know kind of uh to put it into retrospect you know you worked with metacosm for for a decent time um and you, you know, if i remember correctly you still mm. work with metacosm from here and there um you know with that uh what is you know from when you started till now um, what was kind of the most, for lack of a better phrase, because I'm brain farting at the moment, um, <laughs> what was the like oh, yeah. most difficult thing, in your opinion, that you worked on? The most difficult thing? Um, oh, that's a good question. Um, so in like in, in like Metacosm or in like the other film shows? Uh, we'll we'll do Metacosm for now. We'll probably we'll probably talk about other ones. That's a good question. Maybe the probably the uh back rooms the anime one because um yeah because the the all the magic and stuff that happens in there those are like actual like people doing the magic in like these bot bot like avatars so trying to time that with their, like everyone's like different latency and stuff trying to time that all that that's probably the most difficult thing that i had to do fair yeah vr chat latency is uh definitely a definitely a struggle <laughs> I, I i get that um <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, you you were with Metacosm for. I guess I never asked. So how you you said when when did you start with like Metacosm? Do you remember? Uh it's been a while. Let me let me check. I first joined Metacosm in twenty twenty one, July twenty first. So, so almost three almost years. Three ago. years. Yeah, that's kind of nuts. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so you know with, with with that you know you, you join portal media a little bit later you know so what inspired you to you know work with portal media in the sense i know you said you met virtual so how how exactly did that how did that go down okay so um so medical also advertised thing called the vrfa the vr chat film association and virtual actually sent an advertiser saying hey we're looking for video editors so I DM'd him saying, hey, I can uh, I can help out with video editing. It's like, okay, yeah, sure. And then, you know, he gave me the server. And then I was going to help out with editing. But then it, there wasn't really much movement for a while until he said, okay, we're having a film session. And then he asked me if I could help Body Act for that film session because he doesn't have enough people. Because back then he was having trouble, like, um, finding people and stuff. And um, he knew uh, he knew had a background with Metacosm and stuff. So, like... Um, I guess he could trust me or something. So, um, I also helped them with like trying to get get people for like his server, and then, and eventually I introduced him to some Metacosm Studio members, and Metacosm helped out Portal Media for a bit. And um, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, kind of briefly explain to me, you know, you know, after meeting Virtual, you start. You said you were a body actor. Which uh, which film were you body actor of uh, when you first joined? Oh, okay. So I probably uh the first film I body acted in Portal Media is probably a, fo a fox at the supermarket, I believe. Um, yeah, that was yeah, that's the first one I helped act out in. Um, yeah, I, that's yeah, that's the first one I helped act act out in and edited that video. And uh, yeah, fair enough. That's the very first one. I uh, so yeah, and you know just kind of working with two different studios you know what were some what were some noticeable differences between metacosm and portal media 
Okay. Ah, uh, well, this is no offense to Virtual. He's he's getting a bit better and better from time to time. Well, he's getting better like as time goes on. But when he first was doing it, he did, like, for example, Fever Dream, the first. Well, we're making a second one. The first one that was completely unscripted, and um, all Virtual had was the idea in his head, and he was just transferring those ideas to um, Gersey, and then you know, and then you know. He's telling them to the actors as well. All the lines that were said in the Fear Regime, they were all improv Like, um, because I, I was the one that voiced the character, right? So this is one point where I just spoke Japanese randomly because I didn't know what else to say. And Virgil's like, okay, we're keeping that. And I'm, I don't know, it was a, it was a, it was a, what's the word in English? It's a little, what's the word in English? It was a lot of work. Fair enough. I know. I didn't even know that the the script wasn't scripted. That's I did not know that. That's a interesting bit of info. It makes sense now looking back, but I, I never thought it was not scripted. I thought there was a script <laughs> for it. That's that's it's definitely interesting. Um, I get them every time. <laughs> Write a script. So with that, right? You know, uh, it definitely yeah, it created a lot more work. Um, and you did say it's getting better with time because obviously there's scripts now um you know what half of one at least <laughs> hey half is better than none you gotta keep that in mind yeah um exactly <laughs> so yeah you know and working you know on portal media at the time you know you worked on life as a fever dream you worked on totally normal game show um you know just going into the future tense you know so what was it like being in the room where it happened when filming total uh was it not so normal game show or totally not normal game? I don't even remember the full title. I'll slap it up uh, on the totally, screen. Totally normal game show. <laughs> yeah, that that's that's the uh, one. Yeah, that oh geez, it's been a while since we recorded that. Um, mm, that's a good question. I guess um, I guess we did have a bit of trouble finding people for this as well because for this one, the game show, we we had a lot of special guests. Uh, you know, twice was in there tfm johnny was in there so getting the special guests was uh pretty difficult i didn't handle that part i think it was Gersey or um virtual that handled that part but i know getting those would have been difficult um the actual set part is probably just like setting everything up and you know people crashing you know technical difficulties the usual that happens in shoots of course yeah i'd say happens to the best of us <laughs> So, yeah, working with Portal Media and Metacosm, you know, one of my next questions is, is, you know, what was like the greatest moment when working with, you know, both Portal Media and Metacosm? Oh, okay. So, um, for film wise, I think for Portal Media, that one clip in Fever Dream. Or, oh, wait, no, there's a, there's a several clips in fever dream actually so there's the one thing uh, props to gersey uh there's this one scene at the very start of um fever dream where he drones the camera all, all around the club and he's doing this all manually and i, I don't remember who was adjusting folk i think he was doing focus in post-production but he's like adjusting everything manually throughout the whole scene so that's what that's one amazing feat I think he did. But the other thing is that we didn't have that many people to help us out during that scene. So what we had people do is, you know, once they're clear of the camera's view, they change into different avatars and then they went to, like they try, you know, they hide behind the camera and try to go to the next place so that they could like so it looks like there's more people in that area. And then there's also the in Fever Dream, the where they fall the the character falls down in the cheese volcano. Fair enough, fair enough. So so yeah. what about Metacosm then? Metacosm, probably the scene from Backrooms the Anime where um, even though it was a lot of time and effort, the uh, magic scenes where like they're attacking the boss and stuff and they're able to like, actually looks like they're using VFX and um, actually have magic, but the, you know, it's just avatars. Mm -hmm. I think that was pretty cool. Fair enough. So yeah, with with that, you know, it's definitely an interesting thing. So, you know, in working with both Portal Media and Metacosm, you know, definitely both amazing experiences under your belt, you know, but, you know, you also work with, um, you know, some other groups, you know, one in particular being Project Community. So, you know, for the listening audience, you know, what, what exactly do you do for Project Community? 
So I'm in the media team for Project Community and I help with the editing shorts, videos, or if they need help with body actors, I can help with body acting because full body is pretty useful for acting in, um, in videos, so it's more uh, immersive in a sense. It makes sense. It makes sense. So, you know, with that, it's kind of a silly question, but, you know, I wanted to ask, you know, because with how many, you know, things you've done, you know, throughout your VR check career, per se, you know, you've had a lot of falls and a lot of, you know, tumbling, you know, was there ever any, you know, was there any time that you may have broken any hardware or anything like that? Uh, well, yeah, I've broken, uh, well, I've broken one thing this well i've broken two things but the second thing is just because of how long i've been using the headset and probably from the amount of times i've fallen but um i think i have this valve index headset for about two ish years or something one or two yeah wait no it's been a year maybe a bit over a year and um i was helping this one short like i well before the short i was doing i was doing i was still doing stunt stuff so like falling down because i don't know why ever since i was younger ragdolling was something i really liked doing at first i do it on like on my bed and then i do it on like the couch and i started eventually doing it on the floor and now i just kind of just ragdoll onto my floor and um in one short in pjkt the we tried doing the of course trend and there's this one trend is of course we trip over our own, our own play space and the one clip that we use for that um Sure, is the one the one scene that actually broke my uh, right controller, and uh, it just kind of snapped, put all my body weight onto it. So I had to get a new controller. But yeah. ah, yeah, and that was definitely not a cheap fix. I or not a cheap replacement to say the least. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just something I've always wondered, you know. And with with that, you know, is there a particular is there a particular style of uh, content, you know, that you kind of prefer over you know the others? Like, do you prefer shorts content? Do you perform uh, longer form content? You know, what in your opinion, you know, what what do you prefer? Oh, I don't, I don't think I have really a preference in any of them because I like editing any kind of video, but I'm guessing it depends on how much energy I have during that day. So let's say I have like a lot of energy to burn, then I probably would want to work on a long form video. But then if I'm like, if I want to do something really quick, I'd probably work on a little short video. Fair enough, fair enough. So I was going to say, you know, with that, um, let's talk a little bit behind the scenes, um, you know, because obviously it's all for fun. You know, nobody's, as far as I'm aware of, nobody's getting paid. You know, it's all volunteer work and stuff. You know, it's all for fun. So I, I got to ask, yeah. you know, when it comes to behind the scenes, you know, especially during like, you know, body acting shoots and whatnot, um, what was the most uh, interesting behind the scenes moment when it came to realistically any any of the films you worked on? Was there ever like a funny, like like one of the most funniest moments that you've ever had behind the scenes that never saw the light of day? Oh, oh, that's a good question. Funny behind the scenes. I'm very bad at remembering stuff, so this might take me a bit. <laughs> You're good. Well, I guess this, I don't know if this really, this has been posted on Portal Media, but there's a lot of walking scenes. And, um, well, back then we didn't have really that many people that had a lot of walking space. I think I was the only one that had a decent amount of walking space, but it's not even that much. But um, um, the amount of times I walked into a wall, um, I like I could be a I could probably be a millionaire if I like had a had a dollar for every time I walked into a wall, because um, <laughs> there's way too many. If we had recorded them all, I could make a whole montage of it. Careful, I might but, I yeah. might I might do the extra editing work and just slap uh, right on the screen, slap some moments <laughs> if they're recorded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not many. Not some might be recorded. I'm not sure, but we'll see. It's it's definitely. There's a lot of good moments, and I, I can't say a few of uh, some upcoming ones. Uh, e, um, but so with let's let's kind of switch it up into the modern, you know, where we are now uh, in this. So you know, you've been working with Project Community, you work with Portal Media, quite you know, you're a studio executive over there. Um, so out of out of curiosity. And I'm gonna to try to get one from each, uh, from you and uh, the two other guests that will not be named right now. You'll have to watch the episode. Um, is there any type 
of sneak peek into what is exactly going on over at Portal Media. Ah, uh, okay. Um, we did re- recently release the teaser trailer for uh, Fever Dream Two, also known as Fan- Fantas- Fantasca. Fan- I can't say the word, but that the Fan- Fantas- whatever, whatever they titled. I'll send you the thing. <laughs> <if that's- laughs> it's I all can't- good. I can't say it, but yeah, that's what they call it. And um, yeah, it's basically uh the second, just a sequel to Fever Dream. Um gonna be even crazier than the last fever dream i mean this one has half a script so that's that's to update but there might be something you might not expect in the film so excited for that yeah i was i you know definitely yeah when, when it comes out i'll edit the descriptions and you know i'll put it on the description of, of y'all's um but that that's to be determined you know mm-hmm. we'll see when it comes out yeah. um but yeah so you know, with 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 the Fever Dream sequel, you know what? Um, if there's anything you can kind of tease the general listening audience, it doesn't have to be anything big, but just to kind of tease a little bit. You know, is there any is there anything you can potentially say? I don't want to get you in trouble. I just want to. Ah. That's a good question. I think I think I'll leave that up to Virtual or Gersey because they have a better idea what the film is. I'm just uh, I'm just helping out whenever I can. They have a better idea what the film is gonna be than I do because Gersey has all the footage. So I'm just uh, helping out wherever I can, getting people. Well, people are applying and stuff, so I'm just you know accepting their you know applications and making sure if people want to help in the auction, they're able to. And yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So you know. In regards to, you know, your projects and stuff, you know, or maybe projects you may have, you know, is there anything for you specifically um, that is coming up in the near future? Like, as in, like, my own thing, not part of, like, the studio? Yeah. Ah, well, I am thinking of making a little short film series, but I keep... uh mixing up the scripts but it's a secret project for now not many people know about it but i am i am i am trying to cook something in the back but first i want to focus on the studio stuff i'm helping out with because that's what i like to do and that's just kind of like a side project i have i won't be won't be working on it for a while fair enough the the in, the infamous jane z project fair <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so okay that that's something i wanted to ask you right so you're you're well known in the in the portal media and metacosm as i correct me if i'm wrong because i'm I'm, i might said it wrong is it the legendary or the infamous or what 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 is the what is the backstory behind for for the general listening (laughs) audience like what is the backstory behind the nickname okay so um First, when I first joined the medical studios and I got like close to everyone, uh, there was this one other person. I don't know if I can mention his name, but they called me the famous his name. And they, you know, it started happening that, but then he started saying to me, he's like, and then that started picking up to me, saying like, you know, famous gyms and stuff. But then this one person named Shakur decided to like make it blow up for some reason. So he like, he started like, I don't know, just calling me a famous james everywhere and just like i don't know i don't know how he did it he has better like if you ever meet shock or he has a better idea on how it works out but it went from famous james to um the emperor for some reason is this one person named, uh what's his name cobra i don't know if i can remember. but it went he made a little vote thing like a poll saying like uh I don't know. He made a vote or something like that. He made a vote thing. And then apparently like, I won the vote. So then all of a sudden I became emperor. And then whatever, like, I don't think it's died down now. But whatever I typed into the Metacosm general chat, they go, it's, it's a vote. Just like, what, what, why? Um, it's died down now, but. Um, okay. So what actually transpired the name The Famous James? Ah, uh, okay. So, um, it all started in Metacosm, actually. So, uh, there's one na- person, I don't know, I'm not sure, because he left the server. I don't know for what reasons, or I don't know if he's still in it, but he- people called him famous. 
you know, his name. And then and that's how it transferred over to me. And, you know, I kept denying it. But then, you know, apparently the more you deny something, the more they think, the more they, like, encourage it. So that happened. But then uh, a friend of mine named Shakur, he decided to just upscale it a whole bunch. And then, you know, everyone started calling me the famous gene whenever I'm in the server. Still don't believe it to this day. But every time I, like, chat in the Metacosm, Shakur is like... It's it's Emperor James or like Emperor James, and that's I think that's the main reason why I stopped talking to Metacosm chat that much anymore. I used to be active in that chat all the time, but not as much anymore. But you know, I, I chat there from time to time. But yeah, fair enough. And no, it's just a definitely a silly little thing because I remember uh, I don't remember who mm-hmm. had told me about it, but um, I remember there was also and correct me if I'm wrong. It, did somebody make a VR chat group in regards to that? If uh, okay, um, I'm not sure. But, okay, so VR chat group, um, I'm not sure. Apparently, there's a Discord server with a bunch of pictures of me. But I'm not sure if that's true or not because I was never invited to it. <laughs> I know, I know some of my close friends are probably in it, and I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I have no idea. But. A VR, there is a VR chat group, group that my friends recently made called the, uh, was it James is Famous or something like that? And they already got like a few people in that group. I'm just like, why Why are they doing this? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. No, it, it, it's as it, funny and shit posty as it is. It's, it, you know, at least, at least it's in a wholesome and, you know, in a kind way. It's not like, you know, a shit. Yeah. it's not like a, you know, messed up type of thing. It's, at least it's positive. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, you know, out of, out of curiosity, you know, working as a studio exec for Portal Media, you know, there's probably been some interesting stuff when it comes to, um, you know, making things en- like making ends meet, you know. So out of out of curiosity, you know, because there's a there's a few projects, and obviously, you know, I know some are in, under NDA, but you know, was there ever a time where you know, besides because we talked about the script already for uh, Fever Dream One, you know, what was like one of the struggles to make ends meet when it came to you know production? Oh, uh, ah, uh, that's a good question. Um. It was Gersey has been a really big help ever since he joined Portal Media. Um, I don't remember how he found out. Did I invite him? I don't remember how Gersey found out Portal Media. I'm trying to remember because I first went first. Well, I saw him a long time. Well, anyways, eh, I'm gonna not mention that because that's the lore of how I met Gersey. Um, yeah, when Gersey first joined in Portal Media, um, he's been really help in the production side because he has his he has his background of filmmaking, so. He's been doing most of the production stuff. I've just been following his orders, like on what he wants me to do, like on set. But um, yeah, Fair. he's mainly the main guy for that. Yeah, don't uh, don't mind my controller just casually dropping off the face of the earth. Um, so <laughs> with with you know with that, it's it's definitely good to you know. It's good to have fellow people that know what they're doing, you know, help you out and stuff. I, I can definitely, definitely relate to that, to say the least. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Just want to interrupt the video right here. Uh, if you'd like to support me on any of my um, variety of content, uh, I do have a throne as well as a Ko-Fi. So make sure you go check that out. I uh, want to thank you all so much for watching. Let's get back into the video. So one of the other questions, mm-hmm. you know, out of curiosity because you've been you've been around the filmmakers you know for a while you know have you ever brought like a pitch to the room like an idea for like a film or anything i i'm way too shy to do that nor i I don't really have any confidence in the ideas i make so i just usually keep it to myself or like i do like make the video that i want to make but i don't really publicize that at all i just keep it in my portfolio for like, because I'm going to film school later, so I'm just going to make the portfolio thing and just send it to a film school instead of publicizing it, because I'm too shy to actually publicize it. Fair. I would say, you know, out of curiosity, you know, you know, what what is essentially stopping you from, you know, pushing those goals? 
Ah. Uh, well, I want to. I'm more like I like editing a lot more, so I don't really. I don't really like pitch my own ideas. But if someone pitches an idea and they want a video editor for it or like a body actor for it, then I'll I'll be 100% down to help out with that. I like being behind the scenes. I don't really like being the main focus in the spotlight. I like being behind the camera, behind the protect, like you know, just not in the spotlight. I gotcha. I gotcha. Um, fair enough. I, I was gonna say, you know, was there? Because, you know, obviously you have some things in the portfolio, like most, you know, creators do. Um, what 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 would you need, you know, speaking from a uh, theoretical state at this point, you know, what would you need to enact on these, you know, on these projects? Oh, like, like, what would I need to, like, actually, like, post them or? Yeah, essentially. Uh, probably more confident in myself. <laughs> fair, that's fair. Um, I say it definitely does take a lot of confidence to you know post. You know, in general, it doesn't even have to be you know big projects. It could be small, short projects, and it, it takes a certain type of um, courage, to say the least, when it comes to these things. You know, uh, speaking of you know courage and stuff, you know, if if you had to say one thing um for the for the general listening audience like for those that may be interested in working for like metacosm or portal media or any type of v vr film institute for that matter you know speaking from your experience what would be a good piece of advice for you know those maybe interested in you know talk going into the film Ooh, i think I think just have fun. Don't worry too much because this is not a professional environment, so you don't have to worry about too much. Like, of course, there's etiquette, film etiquette, and stuff like that. But as long as you have the film etiquette down and just have fun, then I think that's that's like the main thing that's very important. Because I think filmmaking is supposed to be fun. You shouldn't really stress too much about it. You shouldn't really stress about like, like, like if you post, you don't stress about like how many views it gets or like just just have fun making the content and just. If you want to upload it, you can upload it, but don't worry about the aftermath of that. Just kind of, just kind of have fun with it. No, that's fair, and you know, it's definitely, uh, it's it's one of those things, you know. And <laughs> it's funny because I'm the same way. Because what you what you said right there, you need to take your own advice, and I'm mm -hmm. I'm bad at that too. I'm bad at taking my own advice to people. You know, I I always tell people to you know. Don't work too hard. Don't burn yourself out. What do I do? Work myself too hard. Burn myself out. <laughs> well, granted, my burnouts, yeah. I, 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 I essentially take the burnout and then just work on another project. So it's, I'm getting better at it. But, you know, mm -hmm. I, would, I would love, and this is me personally speaking at this point, I, I would love to see more you stuff. You know, like, it, don't get me wrong. The Portal Media stuff mm -hmm. and the, pro, you know, Metacosm stuff's amazing. You know, but when it comes to actual, you know, uh, portfolio content, that's what people want to see. You know, they want to, you know, understand the personal, you know, side of the people who make these big projects, you know, not to like, not to discredit Metacosm mm -hmm. or Portal Media, like it's for example, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely at least in my opinion, it's definitely one of those things. Um, da, 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 da. Well, I was going to say, um, it actually does look like we're reaching the end of the episode. Um, as, as I know, uh, you guys didn't see most of it, but uh, there were some issues on my end, and this little bit will probably go in the Ko-Fi. Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> um, but James, <laughs> I want to I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. Um hopefully hopefully it wasn't too unbearable with how many times I crashed and shit. But uh <laughs> Oh no, okay. thanks for inviting me. Yeah, no, of course. You know, so, you know, before we go, you know, before I do the whole outro bit, um where can people find you? You know, where can people find the stuff that you're working on? You know, kind of give the listening audience, you know, give them a description of where they can find you and, you know, all the stuff you work on. 
Uh, well, I'm in several discords for the film stuff. So there's the VRChat Filmmakers Discord, the Metacosm Studios, Portal Media, oh, and Studio Penrose. I'm in those discords. Um, but I also have a Twitter, I guess, but I don't, I rarely use that platform at all. I use that probably once a week or something. Um, yeah, but I think that's the only place you can meet me, Discord or Twitter, but Discord, you're more likely to get an answer from me. Fair. No, that's, that's a, that's a very valid, valid, uh, valid thing. And of course, all of these links will be in the description below. Um, you know, so make sure to go check out james and all of his projects you know with all the other studios he's worked with you know but yeah james thank you once again for coming on the podcast um so with you that know. yeah um so with that ladies and gentlemen everyone inside and outside the ballpark this has been episode 15 of the nova notes podcast featuring james here um so if you guys did enjoy, um, besides all the scuff, uh, if you guys did enjoy, you know, please feel free to leave a comment down below, smack that like button. You know, if you're coming back to watch all the other episodes of the podcast, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Cause why not? You're already coming back anyway, but I do want to thank you once again for coming out and I will see you in the next episode. Take care.